Take a look at this video taken 60 miles above the moon by the Blue Ghost Lunar Lander, which will try to land on the surface this weekend. Blue Ghost could soon get some company. SpaceX launched another lunar lander last night, this one built by Intuitive Machines. Mark Strassman reports on the mission to deliver groundbreaking technology to the south pole of the moon. This is where we assemble our spacecraft. Steve Altimus is glowing. This lunar lander is like his aerospace company's latest child, and he is a proud father. It's beautiful, Lander. What's it like to watch baby grow up right in front of your eyes? <laughs> wow, it's spectacular, right? Ignition and liftoff. A year ago, Intuitive Machines' first child, a lunar lander named Odysseus, or Odi, courted disaster on its way to the moon. A key navigation sensor wasn't working. And we're going around and around. We realize we don't have altimeters. We cannot tell how far we are above the surface. Roughly 240,000 miles away, flight controllers figured it out on the fly, but could only watch helplessly as Odi descended to the lunar surface. There were some tense moments because we go to touch down and we don't have any telemetry. It's all silent. And then all of a sudden we get a heartbeat. Bling. There's just this roar of emotion. It's like, wow, this is incredible. Odie landed a little hard and tipped over, but intact. The first American moon landing since Apollo 17 in 1972. The world woke up and saw what we did. It was it stressful? We built a Ferrari and we had never driven before. Okay, you built this Ferrari, drive it across the Alps at high speed for the first time and never have a driver's license. It was that kind of experience. And we practiced, but we never experienced true flight. Now we have that under our belt. This second lander, named Athena, or Addy, stands 14 feet tall. Its mission is much more ambitious. Landing about a week after it launches, Addy will carry payloads for NASA and other customers, including a small rover. On it, Nokia cellular technology. We're testing cellular communications technology for the first time on the moon. Also aboard, a rocket-powered drone. It can hop along the surface into the moon's permanently shadowed craters. It's coming together. And we watched as technicians attached one of the final payloads, a NASA-built drill. Near the moon's south pole, engineers hope it will prospect for water ice, a critical resource for future deep space exploration. There are so many moving parts, so many miles of wiring. Every single thing can cause a mission failure, just about. That's this company's real challenge. Prove reliability for a regular cadence of missions needed to kickstart a lunar economy. First one, we showed it could be possible. Well, here we go with the second one. If we stick that landing, it's repeatable. That's very important. Important for his company's future in this new frontier. For CBS Mornings, Mark Strassman, in Houston. That's, That's awesome. Frontier. Remarkable. I just, it's so far away. I always think about, like, if you take a balled up piece of paper and you shoot it into a wastebasket uh -huh. and you feel good and it's like 10 feet away, it's 240,000 <laughs> miles. Like, just the arc of it all is amazing to me. It never ceases to amaze me whenever we talk about the moon and the stars. Uh, really exciting stuff.